amateur traders organized on Reddit shook up the stock market on yesterday by forcing GameStop stock to go up by nearly 2,000%. Wow. GameStop, where you can't get a trade in for more than $10. A lot of folks have been bragging about what they've done in the stock market, the money that they've been able to make in the last year. Myself, I've purchased some stock and I've talked to you about it. I'm like, friend. Yep, you did. (laughs) You got to get in there. Mm -hmm. Many folks are using apps like Robinhood and even Cash App has a space where you can buy and trade stocks as well. Mm -hmm. Um, With that information in mind, a lot of folks want to know how they can get into the stock game with no experience. I reached out to Terry Egioma. She's a former assistant principal, former educator who left the education field and began trading. She's made a fortune in the stock market and she's going to explain to us how someone with no experience can get into the world of making money in the stock market. Great question. So I have a lot of students who have told me, when I heard about Robinhood, I just got me a Robinhood account and I didn't know what I was doing. That works sometimes, but honestly, a lot of times you're going to lose money when you don't know what you're doing. So I think the first step is to get education, take some courses, really get to know the stock market. And then in my course in Trade and Travel, what we do is we actually start in a simulator. The first thing you have to do is you have to open up a brokerage account. You can't trade stocks in just a regular bank account. So I use a broker called Trade Station. And what I like about them is you open the account with $500 and they actually let you practice in a sim, a simulated account with paper money. I think that's a great place to start, especially as you're learning because you don't know anything, right? So practice in that sim, practice with paper money, start seeing your returns, and then you can go back to your real money. Step two is you got to know how to pick the right company. The best place for financial news is the CNBC channel. They have both a channel on TV and also a cell phone app. And the cool thing about it is any company that you're interested in, I know a lot of people like to uh, first start with companies they know. So you're looking at Apple and Macy's, you know, whatever, that's fine. But you can put it on your watch list and then the app will actually notify you when there's any news or different things about that company that's important. Terry, what I'm hearing is having multiple streams of income. Is that correct? Yes. Right now, I think I'm up to eight income streams. Stocks is definitely my main one. And that's my passion. Like, I love to day trade. I love to swing trade. But then I also have other income streams, too. Like, I have the rental property. I was an Airbnb super host. But I think once you start making money, then you start looking for ways for the money to work. And then you want to diversify. Would you suggest people getting into the stock market who may not have a whole lot of money? I'm sure there's some single mothers listening who may want to be a part of this, but they don't have a lot of extra income to be able to invest. Yes, I do. It's a myth that you have to have a lot of money to start investing with. There's actually several big myths that we hear a lot, but one of the big ones is, oh, Terry, I don't have enough money to get started. What I would say is last year in 2020, when the stock market fell, the rest of the year, the market started rising and you could have made huge returns with even just a little bit of money. Your $500 could have turned into $5,000. That's a huge return, right? Like I literally have a student and he did that. Once you learn how to trade, it's better for that small amount to be growing and working for you instead of just sitting in a savings account that doesn't have any interest. So I started buying stocks last year and I've done pretty well so far. But my issue is I don't know when to get out. That's when it's important to start learning how to read charts. So I'm a technical analysis trader and the chart actually tells me when to get into a stock and when to get out. Because you can actually see on a candlestick chart where the banks are investing and where the banks are starting to sell a stock just by looking at the formation of the candle. And then in terms of just overall market, a lot of things last year kept going up, kept going up, kept going up, and we're back to all-time highs. That's not normal. So I do want to let people know that if you started investing in 2020 and you were able to just kind of pick any stock and it just kept going up, you do want to be mindful that the normal teaching and the the normal theory behind trading and investing is that when it gets to all-time highs, you start taking some money off the table. 
people. So if you're up 137%, you might want to sell some of that. And this is disclaimer. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not giving advice. It's just for educational purposes only. There are several exit strategies. I teach four different exit strategies. But one of them is before you get into a trade, you should have had a goal of like how much you wanted to make on the trade. You also should have a target in mind. But let's just say you get to a place where you feel good about the game. You can potentially sell half of the position and let the other half run. And what that does is it gives you some profit that you could use for whatever you want. Use for paying off debt or reinvest. But then the other part can still run. If it goes up, great. If it comes down, you're still okay because you already took some profit off the table and or you could just sell what you put in. So if you're up 137%, you've already doubled your investment. You could take what you invested off and then just let the rest of that run. There's a couple different ways to go. I do think that there's a couple of things that are gonna push the market higher this year. So example, the stimulus packages, all that money just goes straight into the stock market. That's gonna keep pushing everything higher. But there are some other things that might make it fall down. So the fact that we have a all democratic, um, everything, House, Senate, President. It's a beautiful thing, I think. But at the same time, like taxes may increase for corporations, which may hurt their bottom line. There might be some other things coming down the pipeline that may not be good for, for tech companies. These are things that are kind of floating in the atmosphere, right? So there might be some pullback and you want to be mindful that there may be some pullback. So take a little bit of your profit off the table. Thank you so much, Terry, for sharing with us this morning. Now, if someone's listening right now and they want to connect with you and learn more about your courses and, and ways to for them to learn more about stocks, how can they connect? I have a free webinar at itradeandtravel.com. So that's itradeandtravel.com. And that's where I'm teaching you how I teach my students to make $1,000 in a day. So really great webinar. It shows you all the pieces, including technical analysis and risk management. And it's itradeandtravel.com. Terry E. Gioma, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Morning. We appreciate it. Have a good one. Thank you, guys. Anytime. Thank you.